guys, it's Mr. Herbst here, and today's focus is going to be on roots, stems, and leaves. Those are all parts of a plant. Plants have uh, vascular tissues. Vascular tissues are things that transport materials uh, from one part of an organism to another. In animals, um, th this is a diagram of a human being and our vascular system. Um, we have what's called arteries and veins. So on the diagram on the right, this occurs in animals. We have arteries and veins. What do arteries and veins do? Well, they're responsible for moving around blood. Blood will carry nutrients and um, oxygen and all these things that we need to different parts of our body so that we can use it and stay alive. Well, in plants, they don't have arteries and veins, but they have something that's very similar. They have uh, what's called xylem and phloem. Now, those are two complicated words. Let's go ahead and explore those a little bit more. Xylem, one important thing to know about that is that it's actually dead tissue. Uh, xylem is dead vascular tissue that's responsible for moving water up from the roots so they can be used by the rest of the plant. Phloem is living tissue that will move around sugar from the leaves where, where it has been created to wherever it needs to go to keep the plant alive. Now those are two complicated words, so let's go ahead and um, if you can remember that phloem flows food, so if you can remember those three F sounds, it will help you to remember that phloem is responsible for food and xylem is responsible for the water. Uh, another focus today is going to be on the functions of roots. Now there are actually several different functions of roots. Uh, primarily they are the, the site uh, where water and nutrients are absorbed from the soil. They are also responsible for anchoring that plant to the ground. Without roots, the plant would just blow in the wind all over the place. It's responsible for transporting water up to the stem. And in some plants, we can store large quantities of food, actually. Uh, when we eat a carrot, we are actually eating part of a modified root. Here we have a, a carrot growing in the ground right here. When you're eating a carrot, you're actually growing, you're actually eating part of the root of that plant. Uh, one important thing to know is that we actually do have several different kind, parts uh, to every root. We have the root cap. This is a, this is a hard uh, area of the root that is going to be responsible for forcing the root through the soil. It's going to spread that soil apart. So we want that, that first part to be really hard so we can push through that soil nice and easy. And then we're going to have uh, another important thing, part of the root to know is the meristematic zone. That is the part of the root that's responsible for elongating and actually growing that root out. It's called the meristematic zone. It's going to be responsible for, for widening the root as well as lengthening the root so it can go through the soil. Our next focus is going to be on stems. Stems uh, support leaves and flowers so that we can uh, have them grow up way up into the sky. Some of them can store minor quantities of food and their main responsibility is to transport food and water throughout the plant so the whole organism can, st can stay alive. We have uh, several different kinds of stem. We can actually have woody stems. Uh, these are primarily found in our trees. Uh, and what it's, what's interesting, interesting to know about these guys here is that they all have uh, bark. And that bark contains, uh, in, in one of the layers, it contains living phloem. So that's where actually the uh, nutrients and the food is going to be uh, transported through. So if you were to remove that layer right there of the phloem, it would actually starve the plant. And this is actually one way that, uh, well, if we have a, a, a tree in somebody's yard that's kind of a nuisance, we can kill it by removing the phloem and the plant will no longer be able to transport nutrients around to it the rest of where it needs to go. Uh, then we have the vascular cambium. This actually is responsible for growing, uh, growing the, the tree out in both directions. And this direction, as it grows, is going to produce more phloem. And as this direction grows, it's going to produce the xylem. So all of this right here is actually dead tissue. Uh, this is the xylem right here responsible for moving water around in, in the plant. What's kind of cool is that plants uh, or trees, they form rings. Uh, here's a cross section of a trunk of a tree, and you can see that there's all these rings. If you were to chop down a tree, you could actually count those rings, and for each one of those rings that's there, it's one year of growth that that plant has done. So you could actually know how old that tree is. And what's even more cool is that you, you can notice that there's some rings that are thicker and some that are, are skinnier. That is in corresponding to um, 
did the plant did the tran the tree have a lot of rain that season? So if we have a thick ring right here like we do that I'm coloring in, uh, that was probably because there was actually a lot of rain that season. And if we have a thin layer, that was probably because we had a dry season that year. And another really cool thing to know about, about woody plants is that they actually evolved millions and millions of years before they, there was bacteria that, and fungus that could break them down. So, for example, if you had a, a tree that fell in your yard now, it would begin to decompose. But actually, uh, millions and millions of years ago, there wasn't, there wasn't fungus and bacteria that could break down that tree and decompose it. So what happened? We just had we just had stacks and stacks and stacks of trees that would just pile up and pile up because nothing could eat them. No, they couldn't decompose, and that is why we actually find a lot of petrified wood. Um, this is a this is petrified wood. It's it's hard as a rock. Basically, all the living parts of the tree have been dissolved away and been replaced with different minerals. But you can actually see that on the outside here, this looks like bark. And that's because this was once part of a tree. Because uh, when this tree died and fell, there was nothing that could eat it. There was nothing that could digest it. Therefore, it just sat there and sat there and sat there and became petrified. This is a type of fossil. So this is probably at least, at least around 250 million years old. At least. Another cool thing about stems is that sometimes they can grow underground, and these stems actually are capable of producing a whole new plant. We can have uh, a rhizome, a tuber, and a bulb. Those are three types of uh, stems that grow underground. You may have heard of those terms before, but they are, uh, you may have seen ginger before. That is a type of bulb. So is garlic. So is onion. And also potatoes right here. Those are a type of tuber. Those are actually stems of the plant that grow underground. So a rhizome is a, um, it's an enlarged stem that grows horizontal to the ground. An example of that is the iris flower. You may have these purple flowers somewhere in your yard. Uh, plant, people will plant them to make their yard look really nice. Well, they actually have a, a big thick hunk of stem that will grow horizontal to the ground and that will shoot roots out through the bottom and leaves out through the top. And those leaves will eventually form the flowers. A tuber is another type of modified stem. Uh, a tuber is capable of storing massive, massive quantities of starch. What is starch? Well, starch is type of food. We eat potatoes, so we are eating the starch that's in the potatoes. They do this so that they can survive those long periods of drought or the cold. So a good example of this is the potato. Potatoes grow underground. They are uh, modified uh, parts of the stem of that plant. And here we have another, uh, cross uh, another zoomed in image of a potato. Potatoes have these little things called eyes right here. That is actually going to be responsible for, for uh, shooting out more and more roots. If you were to put a potato in water, you would see that from those little eyes right there, those little indentations, you'd have tons of roots shooting out. And what's even more cool about a potato is that if I actually was to just cut a section off the potato, as long as it had this eye intact, I could plant this section of potato in the ground and it would grow a whole new plant. Potatoes are remarkable which is one of the reasons why we've been eating them for thousands of years. They're easy to grow, they produce a lot of food, they can help keep us alive for long periods of time, and one potato can produce tons of new different kinds of plants. We can also have a, uh, a bulb. This is another type of modified stem. Uh, and a good example of this is onion and garlic. Uh, these, are, these are stems that produce modified leaves, and those leaves are real thick. Here I have a, uh, an onion. You may have seen this before, but sometimes if you get an onion, it's actually going to have these stringy things right here. Those are actually part of the, the roots right here. They're coming out of the bulb. They're coming out of this thick portion right here is part of the stem. And the layers that form an onion are modified leaves. And those leaves can store large quantities of food to last the winter. And out through the top is where actually the, uh, the leaves would, or the green leaves that we commonly think of as plants, would have uh, shot through the soil. Uh, our last focus part of a plant is going to be on leaves. W leaves, their primary function is to trap light from the sun and so that we can do a process called photosynthesis. So they have to have a large surface area. So leaves are, are very wide, thin things. They have a very large surface area. They sit there and soak up all the rays of the sun and do photosynthesis for us, which will make sugar. 
There are six main parts of the leaf that we're going to focus on today. Um, the, we have first the epidermis. That is the protective layer on the outside of a leaf. So that's this right here. We have the upper epidermis right here, and we have the lower epidermis down here. So the top of the leaf is the upper, and the bottom of the leaf is the lower. The epidermis is very, very thin. It's only one, one cell thick. It's very, very thin, and it's, very, it's actually very similar to our epidermis, our skin. Um, your skin is composed of a couple different layers. One is the epidermis. That's the outermost layer, and it's very thin. So thin, though, that light can actually go through it. Same with a plant. Light will travel through the epidermis and into the next layer called the palisade layer, which we're going to have uh, a lot, a lot of cells in the palisade layer. And these guys are going to be responsible for uh, photosynthesizing, and we're going to be producing a lot of glucose, uh, and then that glucose is the food which will go to the other parts of the plant to help keep it alive. Underneath of the palisade layer we have the spongy layer. These cells are spaced out quite a bit. Uh, but any sunlight that actually was able to make it through the palisade layer will enter the spongy layer and it will also uh, photosynthesize and produce some food for the plant. We have a, a vein which is a tube-like structure that transports material out through the leaf. Uh, the vein is um, very similar to our vein. It transports materials out and into the leaf as needed. And that's going to be our structure found right here. We have stomata, uh, or if we have one stomata, it's called the stoma. That's down here. That's a little opening in the bottom of a leaf that allows for gas to exchange. So if you remember back our photosynthesis equation, well, we take in carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is going to go in through the stoma right here. And what do we give off? Well, we give off oxygen. So oxygen is going to be created by the palisade layer and the spongy layer. And oxygen is going to flow out through the stoma and into the air so that we can breathe it. Now, it's not very good for the cells to have those stoma open all the time. Why? Well, because um, if the, we do have them open all the time, then all the, the uh, water and all, all the... It, all the water will begin to escape out through the stoma and the plant will dehydrate. So the plant's very protective of its water. Why does it have to be protective? Because it can't just get up and go to the, the drinking fountain and get water like we can. Uh, it has to diffuse water up through the roots and that can be a long process. So any water that the plant has at the, le the leaf level uh, is important and we want to hang on to it as much as possible. So we have these guard cells. These cells right here are responsible for controlling the stoma or the stomata from opening and closing. So it, as needed, we will open the stomata, and as needed, we will close the stomata so that we don't escape, that the water vapor doesn't escape out into the atmosphere and dehydrate the plant. So the guard cells are these two cells right here that will control the opening, and the opening is called the stoma. Here I have a, uh, a diagram of everything that we just talked about, um, it's a little bit bigger in case you wanted to see things in a little bit more detail. I'll leave this up for a second. But uh, here again we have our palisade layer. That's all of this right here. That is going to be the primary spot where photosynthesis occurs. So again, light is going to come in from the sun, pass through the upper epidermis, and, and be uh, it's going to strike the chloroplasts that are in the cells of the palisade layer, and it's going to photosynthesize. Any light that goes through the palisade layer is going to be picked up by the spongy layer, which we're going to get a little bit more photosynthesis occurring and thus a little bit more uh, glucose. And any gas exchange, carbon dioxide and oxygen, will have to go through the stoma right here. So that concludes roots, stems, and leaves. Again, this was Mr. Herbst, and I'm signing off, folks. You all have a nice day.